Hello friends, welcome to risingpearl.com. Today we are talking about series 10 where we are learning a great deal on circles. Friends, today's focus in this webisode is solving questions involving circles and tangents. This is part 1, this is webisode number 12 and we are going to probably take a look at one or two more webisodes that, uh, that actually uh, focus on solving different kinds of questions involving circles and triangles. So let's get started. Now, I want to draw your attention to some basic points that you would want to keep in mind when dealing with questions involving circles and tangents. So the first thing is that the tangent at any point of a circle is perpendicular to the radius drawn through it. We have seen that few episodes ago. This is one of the two very, very important theorems. And you will almost always be needing this when solving questions on circles and tangents. So what does it mean very briefly is that we have drawn ourselves a circle with center O and let's say P is an external point and PA is a tangent. Because PA is a tangent, it touches the circle at one point, say A. If we join the radius OA, then this angle is 90 degrees. This is what the theorem is telling us. At the point of tangent, if you draw a radius, the angle between radius and tangent is 90 degrees. Now the second point that you would want to keep in mind is that, again, this is now the second theorem. Very, very important. The two tangents drawn from an external point to a circle are of equal lengths. So in this figure, so let's say PB be another tangent. We have seen again from our earlier episodes that there are only two tangents that you can draw from one external point to a circle. So let PA be the one tangent and tangent and PB be the second tangent. The second theorem is telling us that these two tangents, the length of these two tangents must always be equal. The so these are the two absolutely most important things that you have to always keep in mind when solving questions regarding circles and tangents. Now because we have a 90 degree angle, there will be times more often than not where you will be required to prove congruence of triangles. And we will use congruence rules whenever we need, particularly the RHS rule. Again, friends, we have covered the congruence triangles earlier in earlier grades, and I'm going to try and find out, to provide those video links for your quick reference below. But whenever uh, there is a need, we are going to use congruence uh, rules to prove two triangles are congruent, especially using the RHS rule, which is the right angle hypotenuse side rule. And finally, friends, because we are going to be dealing with right triangles, we will be, we may need to apply Pythagoras theorem quite a bit. So these four things, if this is number one, this is number two, this is number three, and this is number four. I am just listing these things out so that you, ha you want to keep these four things in mind when you handle questions involving circles and tangents. There could be obviously other things, other aspects that the question demands. But these four things, more or less, you must think through whenever you see questions on this topic. So now, friends, let's, look at, let's take a look at some real questions. So the first question is, if in the figure below, so we have been given a figure, if PA and PB are two tangents to a circle with center O, so we have a circle with center O and PA and PB are two tangents given. So that angle AOB, so this angle AOB, which is this angle, is given as 130 degrees. So we have to find angle APB. So we have to actually find out this angle. So how are we going to solve it? So first thing is that we are going to join O and P. So we'll do a small construction. We'll join O and P. The moment we join O and P, we recognize that now there are two triangles 
this triangle and this triangle. Now in these two triangles, this angle is 90 degree, this angle is 90 degree. So why is angle OAP equal to 90 degree? And we are saying the same is true for angle OBP. The simple reason why both of these two triangles are 90 degree, though these two angles are 90 degrees, is from the first theorem, which states that we know PA is a tangent and OA is a, OA is a radius. So this angle should be 90 degrees. The angle between the radius and the tangent is 90 degrees. For the exact same reason, this is 90 degrees. So if you look at these two triangles, so this angle is 90 degrees equal to this angle. Now the side opposite to 90 degrees is the hypotenuse. So in this triangle OAP, OP is the hypotenuse. And in triangle OBP, OP is the hypotenuse. So OP is common to both the triangles, right? And then we also notice that this side is equal to this side. Why is these two sides equal? Because both of them are radius of the circle with center O. Also, we can say that these two sides are equal from the second theorem, right? So in other words, we can say that these two triangles are congruent, right? Either you can say by SAS congruence rule or RHS. So these two triangles, that is, let's write it here. So triangle O, A, P is congruent to triangle O, B, P by either S, A, S congruence rule or R, H, S congruence rule. So using either one of them, we can say both these two triangles are congruent. Now we know corresponding parts of congruent triangles are equal. So if this angle is X, this must be X. If this angle is Y, this must be Y. Now X plus X is given to be 130. So X plus X is given to be 130 degrees. Or 2X is equal to 130 degrees. Or X is equal to 130 divided by 2 which will be equal to 65 degrees. Now, if you take a look at any one of the triangles, so OAP for example, we know the value of X, we know one angle, we can easily find out angle Y, right? Because we know that, let's write it here, we know that X plus Y plus, plus 90 degrees. That is a sum of three angles inside a triangle. Sum of three angles in a triangle is 180 degrees, right? So in triangle OAP, X plus Y plus 90 degrees is equal to 180 degree. Or from here we can say Y is equal to, so 90 goes on the other side. So 180 minus 90 is 90 minus X, X is 65. So 90 minus 65 which will be equal to 25. So the value of Y, which is angle A, P, O, that is 25. But we need to find out the value of angle A, P, B. So angle that we have to find out, A, P, B, let's write it here. A, P, B will be equal to Y plus Y. It is this plus this or this should be equal to 25, 25 times 2, or this should be equal to 50 degrees. So friends, as you can see in this particular example, we made use of the congruence of triangles, so two triangles congruent. Then we applied the sum total of three angles 180 degree, and then we found out the value of the angle. And when we were trying to prove congruency, we made use of the fact that the first theorem, the radius and the tangent are 90 degree, and also the length of the two tangents from one external point P, that the fact they are also equal. So friends, let's take a look at one more question. Now this is a question. From a point P, the length of the tangent to a circle is 24, centimeter and the distance of the point P from the center is 25. 
what is the radius of the circle now in this question friends the diagram is not given obviously I have drawn a shape we have drawn a shape here but just by looking at the question there is no diagram which is given so you have to really understand what the question is telling us before you actually start to solve the question right because if you get your diagram wrong in, in examples in, in questions where diagrams are not given you first want to make sure you read the question thoroughly and draw the appropriate diagram so from a point P, the length of tangent to a circle, so we need a circle with center row, and P is an external point. So the length of the tangent to the circle is 24, and the distance of the point from the center is 25. What is the radius? So we draw a circle with center row, and we take an external point P. Next, what we do is that we join P and A, because that is our tangent, right? The length of the tangent is given so we join PA now also what is given is the fact that the the distance of this external point from the center this is given so we join the center and the external point like this now we have to find out what is the radius of this triangle so what do we do we simply join O and A so when we join O and A, we know from the first theorem that this angle must be 90 degrees, right? So if you look at triangle O, A, P, now this triangle is right triangle. This is right triangle because this angle is 90 degrees from the first theorem. Then we can say applying Pythagoras theorem, that if this is 90 degree, this side is the hypotenuse, that is the side opposite to 90 degree. Now what we have been given is that we have been given this length is 24 centimeter and this length is 25 centimeter. So applying Pythagoras theorem, we find out that OP square, which is the hypotenuse square, is equal to OA square. Let's say OA is R, which is the radius. So we will say it is R square plus AP square. AP square. From here we can say or R square, which is here. Let's get AP square on the other side. So OP square is 25 square minus AP. If it goes there, it will become minus AP square. AP is 24 square. Now at this point friends you can actually do the you can find out 25 times 25 right and similarly find out 24 times 24 and then subtract but instead of doing that I'm going to use this particular formula that you have learned earlier in your earlier grades a square minus b square because it is in the form a square minus b square and we recall that if we do that this can be written into two factors a plus b multiplied by a minus b so then what we have is we have 25 plus 24 times 25 minus 24. This will be the R square or we can say that R square is equal to 25, 24 is 49 times 1 equal to 49. Or if you take square root of both square root on both sides, we get R equals plus minus 7 or r equals 7 because the radius cannot be negative. So r which is the radius this is equal to 7 centimeter. So in this particular question friends we actually applied the first theorem and Pythagoras theorem. Now let's take a look at one more question before we wrap it up. Now we have to prove, the question states, prove that the perpendicular at the point of contact to the tangent to the circle passes through the center. So if you think about it, so first of all we don't have a figure, so we have to draw our own figure. And the question states that prove that the perpendicular at the point of contact to the tangent to the circle, at the point of contact, this should be at the point of contact to the tangent to a circle passes through the center. So this is almost the corollary or converse of the first theorem. So here we have an external point P. We draw a circle with, we draw a circle with center row. We have drawn a tangent with P. 
and let's say this point is A. Right? The, because we have drawn a tangent, there is a point where this straight line touches a circle. Let's call this A. So what this question is telling us is that if you draw a perpendicular at this point, we have to prove that the perpendicular, it must pass through the center of the circle. So whenever you have a question like this, friends, we will, like a theorem or a converse of a theorem, so we will assume that let us begin by stating it is not true. In other words, what we are going to say is that, so we draw a circle with center row. From an external point P, we draw a tangent to the circle, touching the circle, say at point A. Now let us assume that angle OAP is not 90 degrees. That means that we can find a point on line AP, say B. So if this angle is not 90 degrees, that means we can find a point on our line AP, a point like this, let's call this point B, such that such that the angle OBP is 90 degree. So again, uh, understand that we are assuming angle OAP is not 90. That means we have a point and we have a straight line. So we can find out a perpendicular from that point on the line. So let's say B is the point, then this angle becomes 90 degree. Right? Now, if this angle is 90 degree, our triangle OAB is basically a right triangle. It's a right triangle. So, then if this is 90 degrees, the side opposite to that is the hypotenuse. So, OA is the hypotenuse. Right? Now, in triangle OAB, so in triangle OAB, so this is a right triangle. So, OAB is a right triangle, OA is the hypotenuse, that means then OA should be greater than OB, because hypotenuse is the largest side, we know that. So because this angle is 90 degrees, so this is hypotenuse, so OA is greater than OB. But what we know is that, but we know that tangent touches the circle only at one point, but this PA is a tangent, so it touches a circle only at one point. So if you take any other point on this straight line, that distance will be more than the radius of the circle because OA is the radius of the circle, right? So if you take any other point on the circle or on this straight line, so that must be outside the circle, right? So, so then that means that OB must be greater than A, OA. So, OB, because this is actually the point is outside the circle, it must be greater than the length of the radius, right? So, if this is radius, this is radius. It is radius plus some extra length, right? So, but, but that is not correct because we just found out that OA should be greater than OB, but we are noticing that actually OB is greater than OA. That means there is something inherently wrong. That means our starting assumption was incorrect when we assume that angle OAB is not 90 degree. That assumption is wrong and hence we say that angle OAP is indeed 90 degrees. So this is indeed 90 degrees. So friends, this last question is more a uh, conceptual in nature. So I wanted to kind of give you different types of questions, different perspectives of what kinds of questions you will be getting. So I hope that you're following us along at risingpearl.com. Like we always, if you have questions, please feel free to let us know. We'll try our best to answer those for you.